let us begin with an understanding of the traditional Dakini. From the Eastern tradition, Dakini is a type of sacred female spirit and can be applied to a human woman with a certain amount of spiritual development. In Tibetan, Dakini means skygoer. From the Wikipedia, the Dakini in her various guises serves as each of the three roots. She may be a human guru, a master who transmits certain teachings to her disciples and joins them in commitments. The wisdom Dakini may be a meditational deity. Female deity yogas are common in Tibetan Buddhism. Or she may be a protector. The wisdom Dakinis have special powers and responsibility to protect the integrity of oral transmissions. In Tibet, there are four classes of Dakini. A secret class of Dakini which represents the empty nature of reality. The inner class of the Dakini is the Dakini of the Mandala, a meditational deity and fully enlightened Buddha who helps the practitioner recognize their own Buddhahood. The outer Dakini is the physical form of the Dakini attained through completion stage Tantra practices such as the six yogas of Naropa that work with the subtle winds of the subtle body so that the practitioner's body is compatible with an enlightened mind. The outer Dakini is a Dakini in human form. She is a yogini in her own right but may also be a consort a consort of a yogi. They are also classified as three bodies of Buddhahood. The first is where all phenomena appear. Another is used as meditational deity for tantric practice. And the last is women, human women, born with special potentialities. These are realized yoginis, consorts of gurus, or even all women in general as they may be classified into the five Buddha families. And now from Crystal Lynx, I'd like to read you what she has to say. A Dakini, Sanskrit meaning sky dancer, is a tantric priestess of ancient India who carried the souls of the dead to the sky. This Buddhist figure is particularly upheld in Tibetan Buddhism. The Dakini is a female being of generally volatile temperament who acts as a muse for spiritual practice. Dakinis can be likened to the elves, angels, or other supernatural beings and are symbolically representative of testing one's awareness and adherence to Buddhistic tantric sadhana. I can't say that word, sadhana. According to legend, members of the Indian royal caste and the wealthy nobility brought their deceased deceased to the far north to visit the shrine of the Dakini, located at the foothills of the Himalaya. Other legends mention a Tibetan myth which says Dakini first appeared in a remote area pure of man. Now that particular line, I'm going to read it again, I want to emphasize it because when we get to what Foth has to say about the original Dakinis and the true meaning of Dakini, what it truly is, not metaphorically or mythologically or even religiously, but as a scientific fact, according to Thoth, this is an important line, so I'm going to read it again. Other legends mention a Tibetan myth which says Dakini first appeared in a remote area pure of man. So to continue, Dakini are timeless, inorganic, immortal, non-human beings who have coexisted since the very beginning with the spiritual energy. In some New Age beliefs, New Age belief systems, they are angelic. This New Age paradigm differs from the that of the Judeo-Christian by not insisting on angels being bona fide servants of God. Moreover, an angel in the Western is the Western equivalent of a Dakini. The behavior of Dakini has always been revelatory and mysterious. They respond to the state of spiritual energy within individuals.
There is a connection between the Kini goddess energies and all of creational feminine deities. Some people believe the Dakini language is linked to that of Atlantis, the trilling of the high priestesses in the language of V-R-I-L. Dakini is the goddess of life's turning points, distillations of archetypal emanations. The Dakini represent those essence principles within the self that are capable of transformation to higher octaves. Dakinis are sky dancers heavenly angels devoted to the truth, dharma, woman consort, woman consorts and partners with the god creators of India and Tibet. Dakini serves as instigator, inspirer, messenger, even trickster, pushing the aspirant across the barriers to enlightenment. Dakini's wrathful aspect is depicted by the Mala of Skulls. Her peaceful aspect is depicted by the lotus frond. Like Hindu goddess Kali, her role is to transmute suffering. Her left hand holds high the lamp of liberation. Dakini represents the sky being as a womb symbol, connoting emptiness, creativity, potentiality. They are the objects of desire and also carriers of the cosmic energies that continually fertilize our human sphere. Dakinis bring us pleasure and spirituality. They provoke the invariating lust that brings life into being. They are poetic and cosmic souls put here to tempt us to spirituality. It is said that the Dakinis have the power to instantly entrap mere mortals with their gaze. The mirror of your mind is the mysterious home of the Dakini your right brain, your feminine side. The secret Dakinis guard the deeper mysteries of the self, representing upsurging inspiration and non-conceptual understanding. Dakinis invite you to cut free all limitations. They are unconventional, unexpected, spontaneous, dancing in great bliss at one with divine truth. In the Eastern tradition, a cycle of 64 Dakinis Yoginis represents a complete cosmogram for the transformation of self, embodying the total energy cycle of creation as depicted by the dance of Gnosis, the wisdom and energy of the Divine Feminine. In representing this complete cycle, we have the opportunity of invoking not only the Goddess, but of manifesting the totality of the Great Goddess herself. Yogini Dakini temples flourished in India around the 9th through the 12th centuries. Erected in remote places, especially on hilltops, the temples were circular enclosures open to the sky. Around the inner circumference were 64 niches, which housed exquisite stone carvings representing various aspects of the goddess energy, creating a circular mandala around a central image of Shiva symbol of cosmic consciousness and the one-pointedness of yogic discipline. So what does Thoth intelligence reveal to me concerning the origins of the Dakini? It was a few nights ago when I saw in my third eye several statues of East Indian females. My eye camera was close up to the faces themselves and they magically seemed to animate, smiling, turning to look at one another, etc. I asked, who are they? And received Dakini. It was then that Thoth Intelligence began to pour through me the knowledge concerning the original Dakini. In brief, this is what was streamed to me. There were 12 females sent from the Pleiades to Earth. 
to be more precise, into the inner Earth domain, the central hollow of the planet. Of course, to say the Pleiades, well, this is a vast system. These female entities came from a specific planet around a specific one of the sister stars. For a moment, let us look at the myths behind the naming of the Pleiades. I went to Wikipedia for this, and I quote, The name of the Pleiades comes from the ancient Greek. It probably derives from Plin, to sail, because of the cluster's importance in delimiting the sailing season in the Mediterranean Sea. The season of navigation began with their Heliacal Rising. I hope I pronounced that right. However, in mythology, the name was used for the Pleiades' seven divine sisters, the name supposedly deriving from that of their mother, Cleone, and effectively meaning daughters of Cleone. In reality, the name of the star clusters almost certainly came first, and Cleone was invented to explain it. The Pleiades are a prominent site in, in the winter in the northern hemisphere and are easily visible out to mid-southern latitudes. They have been known since antiquity to cultures all around the world, including the Celts, Hawaiians, Maori, Aboriginal Australians from several traditions, the Persians, the Arabs, the Chinese, the Quechua, the Japanese, the Maya, the Aztec, the Sioux, the Kiwalan, and Cherokee. In Hinduism, the Pleiades are associated with the war god Kartikeya. They are also mentioned three times in the Bible. Back to the Thothic record. First, it is important to note that in the early 1980s, Thoth began referring to the Pleiades as one of the three cosmic energy systems or starplex directly connected to the creation, guidance, and restoration of the planet Earth. And that this Earth's planetary soul, along with that of Venus, originated in Orion within the blue star Rigel. These three cosmic systems, then, he revealed as the Pleiades, Sirius, and major portions of the constellation of Orion. So the blue star Rigel, Betelgeuse, and the Orion Nebula especially were prominent. Now I would like to add here that we think of these as vastly different. I mean Sirius is what a little dual star system, maybe three, then we have the Pleiades, and then this vast area of Orion. But see from the Thothic perspective, from not just his, from the cosmic cosmologic perspective of the ultra beings, etc. Um, it's not a matter of size. It's not a matter of spatial dimension. It's not a matter of location in regard to how close one is to the other. These are all linear perceptions. And uh, they're dealing with something far vaster than that and more interdimensional. So then, for these original Dakini, whom Thoth are calling the Narvayana, this was a sacred mission established via the hierarchy of the starplex governing the Earth and Venus, and their return into the blue star Rigel. It is into, as all higher worlds operate within their star suns and do not orbit around them. The Narvayana Dakini, as with all beings under the Unimanity Pact of Worlds, are our human kindred certainly with differences, but we are directly related to the kindred, as those calls them. Yet these females are a mix of what we would call human and David. Like the Tusa de Nanan of Ireland, they are able to exist in both worlds, what we perceive as the human realm and also the David kingdom. They were sent directly through a macabic transfer into the interior of the earth wherein dwell a multitude of human star and David beings. The mission of the Narayana is thusly, to help earth's humanity to heal its breach with the natural world. In order for this to be achieved, many streams must be crossed, yet the main signal of the Narayana is to come 
through the dream time and other states of supernal mind to visit us, calm us, lead us into the sacred light forest or lotus realm, as Thoth calls it. This is from whence we came. It is the Davic field that nourishes us and connects us to the soul of our planet Earth. Without this deep connection being restored, we cannot become a new Earth star. The twelve Narayana Dakini still live. They have their enclave on an island in the center of a lake of the inner earth domain. Both the lake and the island are called Sewestra, meaning Swan of Heaven. On this island are also the sisters of the original Dakini. These women are as well of human and David mix, and also some star ancestry from among the starplex. They were born in the interior of the planet and did not arrive from the Pleiadian worlds. The original Dakini have selectively at times taken consorts in order to create these children of the Narayana. The number of these progeny are 52. Now I realize that all this sounds quite fanciful and if anything, more symbolic than actual. There's definitely a taste of Avalon about it which, incidentally, Thoth has shown me exists as well. One must come to their own conclusions about these types of revelations, but for me, in my over 52 years of integration with what is presented to me as Thoth and his intelligence and Akasha, I feel the reality of it in my bones. I believe that the history and presence of the Narayana Dakini was given to me so that I may share it in the understanding that these sisters of the stars or sistars can be called upon beyond the forms in which they have become embedded within the traditions of many cultures. The true Dakini have yet to complete their mission on earth. We, all who now choose to drink from their sacred well, both women and men, may open to a new level of service to the divine feminine and the nature of Gaia, so crucial now to us all in the latter days before the light ascension. What I have offered here is not to nullify the Dakini of tradition, but to enrich the understanding, to take you to the source of this mystic path. To return to what was stated by Crystal Links, and I quote, in the Eastern tradition, a cycle of 64 Dakinis, Yoginis, represents a complete cosmogram for the transformation of the self, embodying the total energy cycle of creation as depicted by the dance of Gnosis, the wisdom and energy of the Divine Feminine. In representing this complete cycle, we have the opportunity of evoking not only the Goddess, but of manifesting the totality of the Great Goddess herself. Both adds to this that the 64, the number of a mantramic, his word, pattern, which when chanted repeatedly, opens a center in the brain-mind complex through which one may enter the Dakini state of awareness, calling forth the planetary soul and thus reclaiming one's own genius. I've written extensively on the genius and the planetary genius and will provide links to this beneath the video in bed. As an aside, the 52 children and the 12 Narayana total 64. Lastly, I thought I would like to take an Akashic peek at the island enclave of Sawestra. First, I read again from Crystal Links the description of the Yogini Dakini temples in India around the 9th through 12th centuries. And I quote, Erected in remote places, especially on hilltops, the temples were circular enclosures open to the sky. 
Around the inner circumference were 64 niches, which housed exquisite stone carvings, representing various aspects of the goddess energy, creating a circular mandala around a central image of Shiva, symbol of cosmic consciousness and the one-pointedness of yogic discipline. On Sewestra, there is one large rounded temple containing a circular opening in the center of the ceiling. It too contains 64 niches. These niches each possess within them a Dakini statue holding a tablet with an I Ching type of engraving. Pieced together, these tablets create the mantramic pattern of what Thoth calls the Golden City in the brain mind complex. I received information from the Thoth Akasha on this golden city some years ago. At the center of this circular temple, directly beneath the sky window, is placed a large crystal egg upon a three-tiered pedestal. This crystal was brought by the Narayana in their star Makaba from their home planet. It is a crystal unknown to this world, nor is it found naturally within the inner earth. This crystal, which they now call the swan egg, is their connection to home. Just a few more insights. The Navrayana and their children, who are called the Dharmata, have the inner realm cat as their familiar. There are many of them on their temple island. The cats of Sewestra are about the size of a lynx and resemble a cross between a lynx and a Maine Coon, more or less. They are of various colors. They have eyes that are generally blue with some blue-green, large and mesmerizing. They are highly intelligent and telepathic. Thoth also speaks of the birds. Um, we have the swan and the peacock and other birds, uh, most especially the Marie bird, which I wrote about in the 1970s as a, a bird of Lemuria. And uh, the Marie bird is related to the birds of paradise and the peacock and the fancier types of fowl. Another thing that they have that entrances me are the orbs or spheres that connect commune with the chakras of the body, with with spirits, with beingness, with so much. I really, it's kind of a mystery as to what they are all about to me. I don't know everything about them, but I originally saw this one of these orbs when I was having a revelation of my own uh, parallel life experience as Kira in the um, in the spaceships, in the starships, and I saw myself with one of these orbs. This was years ago. But now I'm seeing them with the uh, Narayana Dakini as well, and their children. So obviously this is something that is not just connected to one type of star family. It seems to be present among many of them. All of the kindred, of course. The Dakini of Sewestra use music and dance to open the gates to their inner work with Gaia and her inhabitants. They often go to other sacred enclaves in cities such as Seraphim to lead dance, song, and mantras with the people. I will provide a link to my article on Seraphim with this video embed. There is much more to the story, but for now, this is all I have been shown. If more is revealed to me, I will share it in the future. Thank you for participating in this journey with me. And now in conclusion, the essence of the Bikini of Sewestra. <laughs>